So a lot of people ask me who I think the best pitcher is in MLB The Show 21. At the start of the year, we had Edward Cabrera, then we had Jacob DeGrom. Who do I think the best pitcher is right now? In this ranked season, we got 99 Justin Verlander as one of the World Series rewards. Since we're near the end of this ranked season and a lot of people have gotten a hold of him, and I faced him a few times, I, I don't think there is a single pitcher that I am more scared to face on Legend or Hall of Fame difficulty than this guy right here. And also, a lot of people in the summer circuit, in those grand finals, the top four players, I think most of, if not all of them, are rocking his Verlander as well. So he's also a very favored competitive option for players out there. So tell you, let's break down why 99 Verlander is so good, go through the card's attributes, and things that can really make him seem this way. Go through the approach in game and what it's like facing him to pick up on why he is so tough to hit. Let's get into it. What's going on YouTube? We're back with another video here. In case you are new to the channel, we have been uploading a lot of these deep dive videos onto the channel these last few weeks. So if you are brand new, if not hit that sub button, make sure you do. We are on our way to 13k so if you hit that sub button i really appreciate the support and also if you do enjoy these types of videos make sure you hit that thumbs up and if you learn something new you know how the vibe goes around here and finally i do stream on twitch we're gonna be going through some gameplay from the stream so if you want to come hang out with me hang out watch me play the game some more than i do on the channel here make sure you come swing by the twitch to hand make sure you come switch make sure you come by make sure you swing by the twitch channel twitch.tv slash scan it's the best place to find me outside of these videos. But now, let's go into Mr. Verlander and why he is actually so good. So you look at the attributes, and don't get me wrong, the attributes aren't bad, but they aren't like the, the most eye-popping. Like, Nolan Ryan, for example, is really high stamina, but also 125 hits and 125 Ks per nine. And you know, the control and walks per nine isn't the best on this card, but what makes him so good is first of all that 125 hits per nine is still massive. Um, hits per nine makes that inner PCI smaller. So you're gonna be making a lot less like good contact with that smaller PCI against someone like Verlander. And while this is definitely like not the biggest deal, uh, if you're playing on Hall of Fame or Legend difficulty and you aren't the best at either of them, um, this card is gonna cause fits just because of how small that PCI is in part. And this is why some people were kind of underwhelmed by 99 Pedro Martinez because he has 102 hits per nine, which isn't bad, but having up to 125 could be really big and helpful when you're playing on those higher difficulties. 115 stamina is big. He's gonna stay effective and stay in games pretty long. Um, 115 is definitely up there. I think Felix Hernandez has stamina like that. Um, I don't know how he compares to some of the other guys, but that's very good stamina. The velocity and break is what takes this card to a whole nother level. So you see, first of all, he has a 99 mile per hour fastball, and if we go to our quirks, he has outlier on it. So that means that it's gonna hit 102 pretty consistently. 101, 102 is where he's gonna sit at most of the game. I mean, he has a cutter at 95, and that's kind of big, even though the cutter doesn't have the best control or break. Um, having a second fastball type pitch, especially a cutter, is really nice because of the change of speeds. Yeah, this card, you have to really sit dead red on a four seam fastball to hit it well if 102 is what he's throwing. So if you're sitting ready to time up 102 and he throws you a cutter, you're going to be really early on it. So throwing it away to righties is going to cause a lot of swings and misses or rollover swings. And also a cutter is really nice in comparison to a sinker because it moves horizontally to the side more than a sinker does. So you could really throw that off the plate inside to opposite handed hitters really effectively. So if you're facing a lefty with this card, throwing that cutter inside to a lefty could be really effective at getting broken bats or swings and misses. And the, the breaking stuff he has is great. He's got a slider, which is a, a very good pitch. The sliders have so much horizontal movement. They move so much left to the right that it's really deceptive pitch. And since he has that cutter, you could mix all three of them off each other like a lot of people do with Rob Dibble. You dot the cutter off the plate, just off the plate or on the corner, and then throw that slider even further off the zone. Since they all move the same way, that tunnel is really effective. The circle change, I think, is the best change up in the game. It's actually a very viable pitch that I don't think enough people give credit to. The circle change in comparison to the normal change up has a lot more vertical movement. It moves downward a lot more. And the thing with the change up that is great in comparison to the 12-6, um, the 12-6 is just more of a looping pitch. It's like, <sighs> but a circle change. It kind of looks more like a fastball out of the hand for a little longer. It stays straight for a little while and just floats down, which is a really tough pitch to hit 
And if you're sitting on the 100 mile per hour fastballs and you get that change up, it is so tough to slow down and hit him effectively. And obviously the 12-6 isn't a great pitch. Like a lot of people, if you're on Hall of Famer Legend, aren't gonna swing at low 12 to six curveballs. Um, but if you do mix it in enough here and there, you can get the occasional swings and misses. It's, it's good for that purpose, but he at least has 99 breaks, so it's gonna be a good pitch if you can actually get people to swing and miss on it. And then the control, obviously he's got 99 control on a fastball. This is one of those fastballs like Nolan Ryan, like Jacob DeGrom, where he's hitting 102 and he's got really nasty control on it. On the 12-6 and the other breaking stuff have great control, so he won't hang it on accident as often. And yes, the cutter does lack control and break, but just having that cutter is big. It just makes this card so much more effective. Definitely really nice to have the five pitches in what would be that second fastball. So what we're going to do next, um, I have some gameplay from my, my channel yesterday. I faced this card. I think both times I have faced Verlander this season in ranked, I've gotten absolutely owned by him. So we're going to go through some gameplay here. I was getting no hit by him oh until like the uh, the sixth inning. And this man had me literally no hit. All right, so when you're on Hall of Fame and Legend difficulty, having the, the higher pitch speeds, the smaller PCIs, really tough to hit these high velocity type pitchers like Justin Verlander here. Guys like him, DeGrom, Edward Cabrera are so tough to hit because of that. That higher velocity they're consistently hitting. And he's got really good control. So he's he's really dotting up that fastball. He doesn't miss spots a lot. Um, a key thing with him as well, which... The reason I wanted to go to the gameplay here, the, the motion, like his, his wind up and all that is honestly, like it's got a lot of movement to it. And it's kind of quirky. It's not like his release point is overly to the side or anything. He releases the ball right over the heart of the plate. Normally isn't like a, a crazy good thing, but with this card, it allows him to throw inside and outside effectively. Um, You, you see that he's got that leg kick and some weird arm movement which is kind of distracting. It's not like a simple slow movement. So when he is like snapping his leg downward, moving his arm down and throwing the pitch, um, there's a lot to, to look at and distract you with. And if he's dotting on the corners like he is against me here, he is so tough to hit, man. Like, I, I'm 100% not locked in here. I'm not paying attention as much as I should. And he's, he's just trying to get me to swing and miss here. And he's just going to go to some pitches like near the zone. He's going to get me to bite. Like, look at that cutter, man. You're sitting on a fastball and waiting for a four seam. That, that cutter is just impossible to hit when it's off the plate inside like that. But like, look at his motion. Look at how the pitches move in game. Even he can get away with hanging some pitches if you're just trying to crush that fastball. Like that, that circle change is filthy. That And having that circle change, the four seam and cutter and slider. Like those four pitches are so insanely good for this type of pitcher. And if you're facing people who aren't great on Legend difficulty or Hall of Fame, I mean, Verlander is definitely the guy I would say. You could have a really good pitcher that everyone likes. But a really good hitter will still hit them no matter what. But the, the main thing you want is a pitcher that could either limit those really good hitters somewhat, limit how good they actually can do, or if you're playing someone who isn't great in that difficulty, say you're making a World Series push, and you're playing someone who isn't that great at the Hall of Fame difficulty, then having a pitcher who is that effective is big because this is really who struggles against these dudes like people who who aren't like amazing at that difficulty or whatever situation they're gonna struggle hard he's got different pitches at different speeds the pitch is all really good break and it really all just plays off that high velocity fastball and cutter like those are the the big two pitches and my opponents kept on going inside fastballs and i just I couldn't hit him. I couldn't hit him for most of the game. If you're facing Verlander and wondering like, what do I do to hit this card? First of all, you gotta pick up on how your opponent is pitching with them. A lot of times they're gonna go to that fastball and cutter, either like middle inside or middle away to you, depending on which side of the plate you're on. It's They're gonna try to play you being late on that fastball or waiting for a fastball and it's expanding that strike zone on a cutter. And uh, I got a lucky hit here, but Get a solid PCI on a fastball. This is what got my rally going here. When you're facing a really good pitcher like this, you have to do whatever you can to, to, to get some sort of rally going. If you get any runners on, you got to do what you can to, uh, to cash them in. And once I got that runner on, I just started to get really patient, take some more pitches, 
At this point, the, you can see he's trying to get me to expand outside of the strike zone, get me to roll it over. I'm trying to tie up that fastball. I'm early on on that one, so but I'm I'm ready for the fastball. And you see, I'm just working a solid count here, waiting for that fastball. He's trying to get me to bite out of the zone and we aren't biting. And you see, like, once you get to this later part of the game, he might be trying to dot that in the corner, but just not hitting that spot as his energy is getting lower. Um, he's not going to be able to hit those same spots as well. Also, a key thing with Verlander is he doesn't have the best control effort, especially with that cutter, and he'll hang them occasionally. And you got to do whatever you can to hit those mistakes. I missed a really easy to hit cutter there. And it almost cost me this inning because that was the, the best pitch to hit the entire inning. And in terms of my approach, again, I'm just trying to work a count. I'm not entirely taking till two strikes, but I, I'm choosing one spot in the plate and waiting for him to throw a fastball there. That's what I'm doing about now. Once you get to a two strike count, you just got to work on fouling off those pitches, staying alive. But yeah, see, that's why that cutter is so effective. If you hit that spot, the, at this point, I'm just trying to to cash in on a mistake over the heart of the plate like I'm, I'm getting confident at this point where i know i can hit him and we we get in the way cutter got a barrel on it and it got through the infield and one thing with a card like verlander like any starting pitcher when they're deep in a game once they get to a point where you have a high pitch count and people are keeping them in the game and you can get a rally like this going this is your time to really do damage you may not have any other opportunity after this to do damage, especially when you get like a fully stacked pen in a game. But at this later part in the game, getting a high pitch count against this card, working long innings, putting pressure on him, is just gonna give you more opportunities to score. And you're gonna have to really make sure you, you even if you play some small ball with bunting or stealing, you gotta do what you can late game to put pressure on him. And you see, I even bit at that cutter. But I actually timed it up, got a solid PCI on it, and just like that, we scored four off him. Like, I was getting no hit by him, and I scored four. And I think the thing that I I finally got a hold of this inning, I was properly timing up those fastballs. I wasn't late on them anymore. I was working counts, but I was also being aggressive. I was attacking those fastballs. Whenever I saw a four seam, I swung aggressively just like that. And if you're at a point where you know you're timing up these fastballs and you're not late on them consistently that's your point where you, you're comfortable at the plate you got to be aggressive be ready to put up good swings against this card because if you can time up the fastball that's where your damage is going to come timing up that fastball once you take that pitch out of the equation as often then he has to go to the breaking stuff and he's not going to be as effective when he has to mix up those pitches and can't go to that four seam as often so yeah that is going to be it for this video Hopefully this little dive on Verlander was a help. We went through and really showed why this card is the best pitcher in the game. If you happen to disagree, if there's a pitcher you do really well with, leave in the comment section down below. Maybe we'll break down other pitchers who may not be universally liked, but go through why we can do so well or how we can do so well with certain pitchers in the game and go through different pitching metas and tips you could do as pitchers to pitch effectively with the different types of pitchers we get in the game. But that's gonna be it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. Make sure you hit that thumbs up if you did. And we'll be back again on Monday, I think, with another video back at it again. But you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you all again on the next one. Deuces.